bandits have attacked Sakeda Magaji and Jambako communities of the Maradun local government area in Zamfara State, killing no fewer than 10 persons. Sources from the Jambako community confirmed the tragic incident to China's television today, saying that several others sustained various injuries. And in reaction to the latest attack, the Zamfara State Governor Daudo Lawa condemned the attack on the two communities in the Maradun local government area of the state. Well, this is a new governor that is dealing with this issue. But another governor is that of the Plateau State, who is dealing with uh, the, trying to address a possible reprisal from the attacks that have happened in the state. Well, let's get some perspective today. This a national security issues. But how will a Balatinobu administration deal with these issues? It's just coming into power. When uh, will he be able to stand up all to these issues? Let me uh, bring in Mr. Bulama Bukati, who is a lawyer and a security expert. He joins us virtually from London. Thank you so much, Mr. Bukati, for your time to man. Well, new administration, old problems, how do you think Balatunubu will address the issue of security? Banditry in the northwest rearing his head again. Yeah, I mean, you are right, uh, Sheun, and the stories you cited on the top are just an example of the their insecurity that has become endemic in our country, unfortunately. Uh, it is not just the northwestern part of Nigeria. We know that the north central is also in a huge problem. The southeast is uh, boiling. The uh, northeast, uh, where Boko Haram has been operating, is still uh, having lots of security challenges. And it is fair to say insecurity is unfortunately continuing to be endemic in our country. As for what the new administration should do, I think uh, the administration itself was very clear in their manifesto and in the president's inauguration speech that insecurity or restoring security is there topmost priority. And I think they are right to say that, not just because our constitution requires the security and welfare of Nigerians to be the primary duty of government, but also because the realities on the ground show that if we do not tackle insecurity in Nigeria, insecurity is going to make our country no more. It's going to continue to destroy our lives and properties. And we know that the economy and social life will never uh, develop uh, anywhere in the country if insecurity continues to be as endemic as it is. And therefore, the president must hit the ground running. And I think the first thing the president needs to do, uh, just as your introduction alluded to, is to get right the appointment of the national security advisor. Because what you need in the Nigerian security architecture is a complete review that will end in the development of a holistic national strategic plan. And to do that, you need a professional that understands not just national security from the military perspective or from the kinetic perspective, or, but someone who also understands the socioeconomic uh, aspects of insecurity and also understands national security very well. In addition to that, Sherwin, you also need someone who understands cyber security and also foreign policy and economic security because food insecurity is part of insecurity and it can feel the kind of insecurity we are talking about. So you need a professional who understands these issues very well. And if you looked at our appointments for the Office of the National Security Advisor, from 1993 to date, we have had nine national security advisors. All of them except one came from the military. All of the nine except one, Samai Logorzo, who came from the intelligence agencies, came from the military. And I am sure they have done their best, but it is clear that their best was not good enough. Because with every successive national security advisor, what we saw was the worsening of insecurity in Nigeria. And therefore, I think the president needs to think deeply this time around. And I think he will do well to look for a professional from outside the military. And it is not because the, because the military is not important. The military is important, but it is just one small part of our security problems. Most of the security problems we are facing in Nigeria today are internal security issues that require community policing 
that require internal, uh, I mean, stakeholders uh, talking to each other, working with each other, uh, planning with each other and implementing that plan together. Unfortunately, someone coming the, uh, from the military comes from a military background and we know that the military mentality, however much you try to dispel it, will continue to haunt them and therefore they would not be able to look at the other ramifications of insecurity and work with our 16 security and law enforcement agencies uh, in the country. And so my advocacy is that the president should look for someone from the intelligence agencies or from the police and they should take politics out of this. Insecurity is a very serious issue and it threatens the corporate existence of our country and therefore the office of the national security advisor should not be seen as a payment for the political uh, effort of anyone or for the political contribution of anyone. Uh, the president must take politics out of it, look for the best brand he can find, uh, she, I mean, whether she or she, I mean, a he or a she, and entrust them with that, uh, that responsibility. Right. Let, let me jump in quickly, Mr. Bukati. So there are immediate need to address the issues, and I'm very sure that um, the president would have been getting the briefing. Uh, it does look like he spoke tough to uh, the service chiefs, and when they responded, they said the president had asked them to crush these and attend to these, that it would not tolerate any kind of uh, uh, non-coordination within their ranks. That looks to me like someone who wanted to result. But the question is that is beyond talking, it also goes to the very heart of the matter. But we, we've been hearing uh, stories flying around as to some people who are being penciled for that kind of role and that those who have criticized, those who have uh, spoken up for that kind of person. But the question is, what could be the immediate, what we saw in Zamfara, for example, and what we're seeing in Plato, what would be the president's immediate action that you'll be suggesting? I mean, you are right, Sean, the president has started talking tough. Um, Unfortunately, this is their first meeting, and we know that as the administration progresses, the president will get more and more busy. We know that he will be dealing with uh, protests next week, and therefore, in the beginning, he may be able to meet, be meeting the uh, service chiefs, uh, I mean, regularly, but as time goes, it will be very difficult for him, and that's why he needs to get his national security advisor right. As regards to what you need to do immediately, is to ensure that the military effort continues to tackle the insecurity in the country. And to do that, you need good logistics. For example, the case of Zamfara that you cited, I was listening to interviews with some of the victims on BBC Hausa, and they said they reported the matter, that's the attack to the, uh, to the immediate military outpost uh, that was immediate to their community. But the military outpost, according to them, told them that they would, they would not be able to be there because their vehicle that is in charge of operations like those was not around. You can see that there is clear logistical problem and those problems will have to be fixed. Number two, I think the president needs to set out clear priorities, clear demands for the service chiefs and give them deadlines uh, within which uh, to achieve them. Number three, you need holistic coordination because what we saw under the Buhari administration was the federal government acting uh, in isolation of the state governments and each of the state governments doing what they want. President Tinubu must not allow that to happen. They must ensure that all stakeholders work together, plan together, and implement their plans together. Number four, and this the president has already started, is for the president to ensure that all the security and law enforcement agencies, not just the service chiefs, he spoke to the service chiefs uh, this week, but he also needs to ensure that all the other security and law enforcement agencies, customs and immigration, uh, the NDLEA, and other security and law enforcement agencies are all coordinated and are working together. Number five, and maybe I would stop there because I don't want to uh, dominate your, uh, your, your program, is for the president to ensure that security and intelligence cooperations with our neighbors, uh, that's Niger, Benin, Chad, and Cameroon, has been strengthened and is made functional. Because unless and until you stop the supply of drugs, of weapons, 
and of ultra powerful Chinese motorcycle from across the borders into Nigeria, you are not going to stop this All problem. Right. We have 20 seconds to go, but you mentioned the issue of this NSA, if you can quickly, because there are a lot of people who work for Balatinobu to win the election. Some of them will be uh, one payment. Some, some said, look, the role of the economic advisor or the economic minister and that of the NSA cannot be political. Uh, what kind of thing should the president be looking at? Round, round rows in round pegs or what do they call it? I mean, I completely agree. It cannot be a political payment for any politician because they have contributed in one way or the other. And so what you need is, number one, someone who is a distinguished professional in intelligence or in internal policing. Number two, that person must be proven to be someone who is not corrupt because we know people who have held positions of power who became corrupt later. Number three, you need someone who would command the respect of the service chiefs as well as the heads of the intelligence agencies and the security and law enforcement agencies but also someone who will hit the ground running right. and someone who understands the communities the stakeholders and will be able to work with stakeholders right. uh, in the security architecture in order to deliver our country from this uh, ep epidemic Mr. Bulama Bukati, it's always a pleasure having you on the program. I'm a senior fellow at the Tony Blair from the uh, uh, Institute in London and a lawyer and security consultant. Thank you so much indeed for your time tonight. Thank you very much, Sean. Always a pleasure to be with you. Thank you so much. Bye -bye.